Despite knowing Saras's identity, Mimori decides to keep it a secret. After that, they encounter a powerful monster named the Skeleton King. Mimori immediately realizes that it is much more powerful than other monsters inside the ruins. Meanwhile, Saras points out its weak spot. She also tells Mimori that even strong adventurers can't defeat a Skeleton King. Saras decides to go all out in order to protect Mimori. She also tells him to run away if she is unable to defeat it. Bro, what? Did she forget that Mamori defeated the White Walkers, a group she had no chance of winning against? Anyway, Saras prepares to deal with the Skeleton King. Meanwhile, the Skeleton King prepares to launch an attack, but before it can attack them, Mamori uses his Paralyze and Poison to defeat the Skeleton King. Poison! Needless to say, Saras is stunned. After that, Mimori also finds an egg inside the ruins. Meanwhile, Mimori's classmates are struggling against some skeletons. As usual, Yamada is being annoying, and Kirihara is being a narcissist. Kirihara also arrogantly declares that he just reached level 24. After a while, Saras delivers the Cup of the Dragon's Eye to claim the reward. After that, Mimori tells Saras to meet him in his room at 8 p.m. Thus, Saras visits Mimori exactly at 8 p.m. Mimori tells her that he wants to hire her as his escort. He then shows the forbidden script and implies that his goal is to meet the forbidden witch and decipher the script. By the way, his destination is the Golden Demon Zone. Just to make things clear, Mimori calls her by her real name, Saras Ashrain. Mimori reveals that he found out about her true identity when she fell asleep in the ruins. With no other choice, Saras decides to come clean about her identity. In exchange, Mimori also tells her his real name. Mimori then gives her a rare magic stone as a form of payment. The next morning, Saras heads to the Lord's residence. But before heading there, she tells Mimori she will be back by 1 p.m. While attending a party hosted by the Lord, Saras meets a rather shady individual. Meanwhile, we see Goddess Vicious taking advantage of Ayaka's kindness. Well, Vicious wants to eliminate the heroes who are useless, but Ayaka wants to fight on their behalf to keep them safe. While waiting for Saras, Mimori realizes that she is late. He wonders if Saras ran away from him. But then he overhears two people having a conversation about Saras Ashrain. He learns that Saras's cover was blown and now she is running. At the same time, Mimori spots the Black Dragon Knights. He also realizes that the Black Dragon Knights are after Saras. Meanwhile, Saras is being cornered by the Black Dragon Knights. I, I have to admit, the animation has become a little better. Anyway, as she is fighting, she is confronted by Gizun, who is one of the five dragon knights. As they continue to fight, Saras decides to use spirit regalia. But before she can do that, she is caught off guard by Gizun. As a result, she loses the fight. Then, just as Gizun is about to do something questionable to her, Mimori appears and saves Saras. Oi. Poison. Needless to say, Saras is surprised to see Mamori there. Saras then tells him to cancel their contract. Well, she believes that staying with her will only bring trouble for Mamori. But to her surprise, Mamori pays her more crystals to have her as his escort. What the hell? 